Bitch Hot. Good morning. Welcome back to my channel, Big Nick Burt with the Big Nick Energy. First, I, I would like to say shout out to the legend, the one and only Walt Clyde Frazier. Happy birthday, 77 years old. He said he's going to keep going till he's 80. So we got three more years of Clyde and Mike on the call. And we're going to soak it in and love it every minute of it. Especially on a day like today when we get that win. So that was really, really exciting. Mostly because not just the, the really solid play of Alec Burks, which we know we can expect from him from time from, to time. But more importantly is Emmanuel Qu quickly really stepping up as a composed player point guard and I do emphasize composed because it's a lot more than just bringing the ball up but it's making the right decision under pressure and last night we had a lot of pressure down the stretch they were coming back this is right before the Randall sub when Toppin was still in and and Toppin had a really really nice play but we were not playing well and it was actually kind of Burks uh, making bad decisions and, and IQ making bad decisions. So you bring in Randall and be like, all right, well, here's another option that if you need help, you can give him the ball. And we needed the help. So without much more to say about all this, I'm going to jump right into some some clips that I can analyze and we can look at just how we sealed that game up down the line. And it's a lot of Tom Thibodeau and it's a lot of read and react offense, which, you know, I really enjoy. So without any further ado, here we go looking at last night, just a couple of plays. So to start us off, let's take a look. Before Randall came back in, Mr. Obi Toppin is in the game. IQ bring the ball up. We got 6 minutes, 19 seconds to go. Up by 7, Chicago's in the bonus. They're trying to, you know, come back. It's still a nice close game. So Thibodeau has... IQ bring the ball up on the left side. Four other players are up on the right side, three-point line. And Chicago is worrying. They're play playing some defense, but they're worrying. They're wondering what is going to happen because quickly right now has an open lane to the basket. He's not looking for it, though. He's not going to beat him off the dribble. Uh, I need to get this guy's name, but the person playing defense against him, I think number two or 22, uh... I thought it was an interesting choice not putting Caruso on IQ. I thought it was interesting that they put a taller guy on IQ and left Caruso and Levine to Burks and RJ. I thought that was a very interesting choice by Chicago, and I think it was honestly the wrong choice because it was more easy to exploit them off of mismatches because it put Caruso off ball and it made him run and switch where he shouldn't have. So Thibodeau has four guys up on the three-point line. Now, classic Knicks, if anybody's watched tape before, which if you've seen my channel, of course you have, the Knicks love running a double high screen and roll. And I love it too. It's a very, very solid play. You get a lot of different options and a big, a big chance of getting a good mismatch. So what do we do here? RJ and Mitch set the screens, but they were kind of not, that's not the real, the real point of this play. Instead, they roll and IQ swings the ball to the corner. And now here's where the real play starts coming in. IQ swings it to Toppin, Toppin swings it to Burks. Toppin immediately sets a screen and gets the switch, which we love. He gets Levine on his back, Burks dumps the ball to him, and now look, look where Mitch is down in the block. RJ is over in the three. He's ready to come and help if he needs to, but kind of everybody hangs out. Burks and IQ at the top of the key. IQ can always swing over. Burks can always swing over. So he has what we call a pressure relief valve, right? The release, the relief valve is what we call that position up there at the top of the key. And the relief valve is, hey, too much pressure, too much heat in the oven. All right, kick it back out and we'll figure something out. So there's seven seconds left on the shot clock. More than enough time to kick it back out, maybe swing it around the horn, get it to RJ. Uh, maybe if Vujovic comes over and tries to help, it, it, it'll give Mitch open. But instead, we see Obi Toppin take this mismatch. And this is a Tibbs-drawn mismatch to get 
Levine onto Toppin and to Toppin to execute it, which he does. And that's what we've been seeing more and more from Toppin is that he's able to take these mismatches and exploit them. Same with Quickly, same with Randall, same with RJ. So we're really mismatch heavy on our offense. And it's almost like, oh, it's almost a detriment where we're only looking for a mismatch. But it's really effective. So I'm all for it. So let's move on to the next play we're looking at. And again, IQ's got the ball, which is going to, we're going to see, be seeing a lot of that. And I'm loving it. Really, really am. This time, top of the right side key. And again, we got three guys, the top of the key with them. And then Randall is down in the corner waiting for that, for that swing. So what are we trying to do here? IQ brings the ball up. And we'd like to pretend, you know, we're setting some screens. So RJ kind of like does a little, oh, maybe I'm setting a screen, maybe not. Same thing with Robinson. Robinson comes up. Maybe I'm setting a screen. Ah, maybe I'm not. And then they dive down to the block and let Burks come up. So we got RJ in the corner on the right side. Randall in the corner on the left side. And Robinson down in the dunker spot left side where he's most effective leaving that right lane wide open for someone to come in so those faint screens from rj those faint screams from robinson kind of got their defense looking like what's going on but here comes burks burks sets a screen relocates on the other side and iq is like yeah i don't i don't really need this screen i think i think i'm confident in my ability to take him off the dribble and not to mention too i think if they were looking for a mismatch they didn't get it which is fine. So now what do we see? IQ with his defender, and he's being defended really, really well. I just want to give props. I, I know I said that having him defend IQ is maybe a mistake, but I see what Chicago was trying to do, and he is a very good defender, and he was staying with him, and that's all you can ask for. But Thibodeau had a plan, and that plan was spread the floor, open the lanes up, and see if we can get inside. And with RJ at the top of the key... With Burks in the corner, Randall becomes that relief valve. He starts coming up, following behind IQ, but that's not needed. And it could have been. You know, Vujovic and uh, the defender on IQ could have trapped him up in that center, could have stopped him. But instead, Vujovic was a little late to rotate. And of course, Mitch is in that dunker spot waiting. I love to see that. So it wasn't even really, they didn't even really set any screens. It was just all just motion, faint actions like, oh, we're going to set a pick. Are we going to set a screen? No. What we're going to do is just clear out, let IQ work. And when he gets inside, breaks down the defense instead of going high. So this is an interesting thing. And this is why I was kind of against this matchup for Chicago, putting this taller guy on, on, on IQ is that every person who plays knows if you're going up against a stronger, bigger player, you're not going to go high up over him. So where he would normally maybe look for a lob, and maybe that's why they put a taller player on IQ is to prevent the lob, prevent the float, and you know give him more of a more of some blockage when he's going up for a step back or what have you. What you lose though is that from going up here to down low is a lot more difficult for a taller player. And of course, we see. IQ exploit that with a very nice little bounce pass under after a little show nice little bounce pass right to Mitchell Robinson really nice really clean play and just goes to show this read and react it's not all about setting a hard screen I know we all want to see a hard screen set but that's, sometimes that's not the point sometimes the point is just to get the defenders moving and make them think something's going to happen and when in reality it's like yeah we're just doing another iso play we're just going to let IQ work and the moment you try to recover and stop him we're going to dump that off so he, he hit Mitchell Robinson on the block but he also had Randall coming behind him for that relief valve where he could have kicked it out to Randall Randall could have swung it what have you a lot of different options the one that we got was honestly one of the best ones so by then that's when we really needed that we really needed some points right there it was 98 99 both are in the bonus three minutes left and we're just running a faint play and letting iq work and this is the big big 
step up that I'm seeing with IQ lately is he's just cool, calm, collected, composed, making the right decisions. And this is why we're saying, hey, we can actually see IQ starting as a point guard next season. That would be big. So we see the options one, two, three, four. What does IQ do? He goes for that four right down low. Love it. Love it. What a what a play. And that's clutch time. Pressure's on. Time to make a bucket or lose. And IQ made it happen. Let's fast forward. Two minutes to go. 100 to 101. So you see we're hanging around. We're letting Chicago stay in it. This time, Burks is bringing up the ball. Right in the center. Look at Thibodeau. Thibodeau is calling, hey, he's pushing him out. He says, no, Mitch, no. Get out of there. I don't want you setting the screen. Instead, let's get RJ the ball. And let's get Randall to set some screens. Look at Tibbs calling it. So here comes Randall. Sets a little screen for IQ, maybe to get IQ free. And if IQ cut to the basket, he would have been free right there. But instead, all eyes are on RJ. And IQ knows. He's like, yeah, I could have cut. So here comes Randall. Randall hits him with the screen. I think I think IQ could have cut to the to the foul line at least. But he leaves that center open. And this is this is a smart play because he knows RJ is going to drive. We all know RJ is going to drive. So instead of clogging the paint, IQ stays out. IQ stays out on the perimeter. And Randall sets another screen. This gets Caruso just a step behind RJ, able to get to the basket, able to get fouled, and he's been hitting his foul shots lately, which we love. We love to see it. So let me just play that one, that play one more time because I really, you know, I want to make sure we're, we're really getting it all. Burks is bringing the ball up. Thibodeau is saying, Mitch, do not set that screen. Mitch is like, all right, I will clear out. RJ says, it's my time. I got Caruso on me. I think this is a bucket. IQ says, maybe me. Tib says, no, Randall's coming. Randall says, all right. Free up IQ. IQ doesn't go. Hits Caruso. Caruso, that's enough space for RJ. Vujovic got to help. And he fouls him. Great outcome. Great outcome. The most efficient things in basketball are dunks, free throws, three-pointers. That's all we want. Dunks, free throws, three-pointers. And that's all we're seeing at this point in the game. So, all right. 42 seconds to go, 103 to 104. Knicks hanging on to a one-point lead. And the Garden is getting hot, getting heated. We want to close this out. Everybody knows what to do. Thibodeau is on the sideline giving that chop signal. Chop, chop. Now, I don't know what this means because I don't watch enough and, and I don't put the hand signs to the plays half the time. But what we see is basically a nice clear out. Tibbs is there saying, push them down to the corners. Push them, push them, push them. Get out. Get out of the center. Push them away. And I thought that was interesting because he was saying it right to Mitchell Robinson. And he says, Mitchell Robinson, get your butt to the corner. And Mitch says, hey, Randall, I'm supposed to be in the corner. You go up, which is an interesting change of events. Normally, you would send your big guy to set the screen. He's a bigger guy, bigger target, and... You can do a little bit more on those on those picks. But instead, now I like this too. Going with Randall to set the pick gives you a better option on the roller because he can ball handle, because he can shoot it. You get more options off of that pick and roll. So although they didn't hit him with it, it's a better call. Putting Mitch in the corner though, you are kind of, you're banking on it going left and you're banking on it you know, not, not having to kick back out and not have that relief valve. So now let's look. Now let's look. IQ's got the ball. Burks is in the corner. RJ is there, top of the key. So he's kind of your relief valve. Mitch is in the right-hand corner. And we got Randall coming up to set some screens. And I think this was a very interesting play because... Most people who know the Knicks would expect them to be going with Randall down the stretch. It's a very close game. Why not go to your best gun? So, of course, we send Randall up to play the pick guy. And we get, is that DeMar DeRozan, number 11? 
I'm going to have to check that. But uh, his defender is actually fronting him as if Randall is the main threat. But instead, so Levine and I believe DeRozan, yeah, it is DeRozan, go right to the foul line. They leave RJ up at the top of the key. They front Randall so he doesn't get that first entry pass, which I don't think that was ever the point. And instead, they allow Randall to set a completely faint screen. He doesn't even really hit the guy, but IQ is able to get the first step. And because DeRozan and Levine are so concerned with Randall and RJ, IQ is able to get into the paint. And just like before, where we saw him get into the paint and go low, get that pounce pass into Mitch, he didn't have that here. So he had to go high up rise up over three defenders to kick it out to burks and burks does what he does and hits that three-pointer unbelievable night and that's what iced the game unbelievable night from the knicks mostly emmanuel quickly obviously alec burks is continuing his very good play he sealed the game against detroit with a three-pointer and a steal uh and i love the obi Toppin dunk obviously and then last night seals the game again with a beautiful three-pointer and he drew a charge on DeRozan down the line. So really, really smart heads-up plays from Burks. And I think having IQ running the offense primarily is helping him kind of relax and just take it as it comes. So that catch-and-shoot three from the corner is exactly what you expect from Burks. That's why he's here. That's who he's supposed to be. And IQ breaking down the defense and making the right plays is exactly what we want in our young guy right now. So I'm very excited for IQ to be developing as a point guard, as a ball handler. I know people are saying, oh, he's a combo. Oh, he's not a true point guard. He wants to be a six man or whatever. But he, you know, why can't you develop to be a point guard? Uh, Clyde says it, and he said it again last night, is it's the hardest position to learn. It's the hardest position to train for at that level because what's expected of you is so much higher than other players and you you have the ball in your hand you, you at all times so it's you're going to make more mistakes and IQ is showing that with the proper support with the proper guidance with the proper scheme and with the proper you know experience and 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 training he can take this read and react offense that Thibodeau loves and make it work so down the line I highlighted these four different plays that really showed not just what the coaching staff is able to do, but also how the players themselves are able to make it happen. So I'm very excited for this win last night. I'm not too excited, and I saved this for the end. I know I should have said it maybe at the beginning, but uh, I guess I'm not too excited for Julius Randle and how he's been playing lately. And I'm kind of excited that Tibbs is kind of using him as a feint. Like, yeah, you think we're going Randle? We're not. So we saw it last night. We saw it actually a couple games recently that he's not getting the number one treatment option down the line as he was getting last year or even earlier this season. Instead, we're kind of putting more faith in IQ, but we couldn't have done that the beginning of the season. So I don't want to say that Tibbs is wrong for not doing it sooner because I don't think Tibbs, I don't think IQ was the same player he was you know, beginning of the season versus now. So that just shows growth, shows coaching uh, trust, and uh, just shows maybe a shift away from Randall or at least maybe a redefinition of his role in the offense. So we saw him setting faint screens. We saw him kind of playing as that allure to say, oh, like this is the guy, but instead it's all IQ and Mitchell Robinson. And not even, it wasn't even RJ down the stretch. So Really exciting win, especially because we were able to do it without investing too much into RJ, RJ and Randall, and instead invested some into IQ, Robinson, and Burks. So we saw Burks the other night. It was great. We saw IQ the other night. I hope this really continues, and obviously it's giving me a lot of hope and excitement as a Knicks fan, but uh, something's got to go on with Randall. I don't want to say he's gone. I don't want to say we should trade him, but it's almost like you know he's just trying to get through the end of this season. And I don't know if that's a mental health thing. I don't know if that's, I don't know what it is, but I think we can all agree something's not right. And I hope he figures out whatever he needs to figure out because we can all see it. 
the way he threw the ball away at the end of the game last night, it's not a good look. So, hey, we're praying for you, man. We hope you're, uh, you're, you're finding what you need. And if what you need is away from New York City, is away from the Knicks, hey, I mean, I hope you find it where you where you need it and uh, you can continue your, your career in a better, healthy, safe environment. And if you're here next year, bro, I hope we can support you and you can come out and uh, prove everybody wrong because that's all we ever want here as Knicks fans is to be proven wrong with our negative takes. And that's all I'm going to say about it, all right? Uh, thank you for stopping by. Stopping by the channel, let me uh, school you up and do some studying on some Tom Thibodeau offense. Uh, I know I still a lot of people want him gone, but un until he's gone, I'm going to keep, you know, looking at what he's doing and trying to break it down. So thank you for stopping by. I'm Big Nick Burt with the Big Nick Energy. Uh, hoping to do this again soon. We need Miami to win against Atlanta and Charlotte to keep our dreams alive. I think it is definitely possible to get in the play-in right now. Is it probable? No. But is it possible? Yes. And to that, I'm still excited to watch these games. Miami can beat Atlanta, can beat Charlotte. Atlanta and Charlotte can lose the games they're supposed to lose, i.e. against the Nets, against, uh, oh God, I hope the Wizards beat them as well. But um, if Miami can beat them and we can beat them, we might be in a play-in experience, all right? So... Even if we lose in the play-in, it's still exciting for me. So I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep rallying for it until it is impossible. So thank you so much for stopping by, Big Nick Burt with the Big Nick Energy. I'll see you again next game. Thank you so much. Burt knows basketball, y'all.